What's going on, sports card collectors? It's Monday. Probably not used to seeing this many videos for me um, in quite some time. Uh, tomorrow, I'm expecting an SGC order to come in. It's actually two orders combined into one um, from the submission group that I'm part of. But basketball is what I enjoy watching um, as a fan and as a Lakers fan, but as a fan in general, just basketball. And I keep seeing card grading companies and the prices going up and new card grading companies coming out and retail is ridiculously priced for blaster boxes or hanger boxes or whatever boxes you're looking to buy. <clears throat> and I got thinking to myself, um, there's also talk out there is the sports card collecting market ready to crash. And, and I guess like the stock market, I'm not big in the stock market, but um, they tell you that there's signs and, and um, stats that are showing that there's potential for it to in the upcoming months, weeks, or a couple years ahead, um, whatever it may be, however it's determined. But in the same token, it got me thinking as a sports card collector and brought me back to when I was a kid collecting and the excitement that I had getting together with friends and then we would go ahead and <clears throat> trade cards out of our books we were all individual collectors some of the same person and some were different than others um, I started out actually as a kid as a New York Mets fan so I had the Daryl Strawberry and the Dwight Gooden rookie cards and my friend was a New York Yankees fan so he had the Don Maddenleys you know but then we would collect the Ryan Sandbergs and the Tony Gwynns and the Wade Boggs and so it got me thinking people there's very few people that are able to afford to do bulk submissions, and I say bulk and in large numbers for card grading, uh, especially with the, the prices going up. So you have what you, if, if you want to, everybody talks about 1% or 2%, or I don't have the percentages, but I put myself in that category. Um, now with prices going up, I'm more apt to only submit 10 cards maybe even less and it just depends but it might only be instead of submitting every other week or every two weeks i might be submitting 10 cards once a month now so that's not really the volume that that these card grading companies were used to seeing or seeing and i know there's still others out there that can still do that and then you have the whole retail issue of going to a walmart or a target or wherever your um, local store is that provides your sports cards and either finding the shelves wiped out um, or some of you are able to get them and then we, we've jacked the prices up so it makes it again difficult for the everyday collector um, of the hobby <clears throat> to purchase any cards. So what that leaves is for them to buy individual cards um, to take the cards they have and if they have enough money to go ahead and send them out to get graded. Um, I look at this as an opportunity now is I think you're going to see us go back to a little bit of an old school. And when I say old school, when I first heard that there was going to be a card grading company, PSA come in and BGS, I thought that's ridiculous. I'm not sending my cards out to be graded and put into a slab. That's just ridiculous that I have to pay the money to have that done. Well, obviously, I, I'm years later when I first got into my first card grading. But when I first saw it, I thought that was stupid because I grew up that old school. You collected cards, you put them in a plastic, you put them in a binder, you put them in a case. And then you showed them off to your friends and this was you were proud of that collection that you had of, of cards, teams, individual players, whatever it may be that you that you did as a kid, whether it's even complete sets um, like my dad was. And we put them in the, the, the pages and the binders. And I think some of them we even did front to back uh, to save on pages. So where am I getting with all this? So what I'm looking at this is an opportunity now is for the collector. Not the collector that's looking to get their collection put into a slab. Because um, really, if you want to protect it, you can go ahead and put it in a one-touch. Put a penny sleeve over the top of the card and close the one-touch up, and you're protected. Okay? Um, I'm looking at the individual that still does maybe the pages. Um, displays them in a, in a big plastic slab with the four screws for a desktop display. Whatever it may be. This is where I see an opportunity for some people are going to bail out on the card collecting as far as getting it graded. And they're going to go back to the old school way of trading, 
buying that one individual card to add to their collection and they're just going to enjoy the hobby as a collector. Where I also seen advantages for the seller, but they're going to be the buyer first. So it's really not the seller. So let me back up. The other advantage I'm going to see is for the buyer because you're going to see people buy stuff, but the numbers aren't there to sell it and they're going to sit and hold on it. Um, the card market is down right now. Um, I'm seeing it. Um, I go on waves. There's just some weeks where it's just nonstop and I go into the weekend and I get slammed with orders or I go into this past weekend and didn't have really any orders, but a couple. So I see it. There's people that are on YouTube. They're on online. They're talking about it, that the card market is kind of down right now. So this is the opportunity is it's down. So you'll buy while it's low and you hold on to it and sit. Problem what happened is, is we've got instant gratification with these card slabs and PSA and everything else. And people bought, 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 bought. And we're, we're seeing ridiculous prices on rookies that just started this year selling higher than guys that were rookies two, three years ago. And you're saying, how can that be? And it's just, everybody's just built up that demand, that hype. Um, kind of like we built up the hype last year with Zion and Ja. And then quite honestly, Zion's putting up pretty decent numbers, but there's just not that hype anymore. You don't hear that talk um, really like you did with, with uh, Zion and Ja um, last year, this year, you know, but they're doing both doing really well. It was all around the mellow ball, the mellow ball, the mellow ball. Then he gets hurt. James Wisen gets hurt. You got Anthony Edwards out there. Um, and then you have your veterans that are getting hurt. And it's just, you know, there's just a lot that's going on this year, especially with the pandemic going on. I can see taking a step back, taking a deep breath and just sitting there and going, you know what? I enjoy collecting in this hobby and I'm going to focus more on my collection and that is not as much as buying and selling. So for me, it's not much of a, of a, a personal collection that I do much anymore. Um, while I do have some, um, it gives me an opportunity to reflect and say, you know what? Maybe I don't need to focus so much on this card grading. I'm putting too much pressure on myself to grade cards, grade cards, turn around and flip some of them, keep some of them, make a profit off of it so I can either buy more or supply, you know, for my next order for submission. So why am I rambling? Um, just because it's on my head and I just thought I'd share that idea because maybe there's somebody out there. And actually what I thought of, and that this is going to take some work to do um, with the background of it, but... Uh, maybe you could give me a feedback down below on what your thought of this is. Is We focus so heavy on grading cards, and we have the new grading card companies that are coming out almost seems like daily, and that's fine. There's a piece of pie for everybody. But what if we could go back to old school and we can create a, a, a forum or a group page like on Facebook for those that are dedicated collectors? And we'd have to have some type of... a uh, background check or maybe you'd have to submit a reason why you enjoy collecting in the hobby um, before you're accepted into this group because we're trying to we want to make sure we don't get anybody in there to scam where you're confident that if I sat there and said hey I have a let for instance let's just say I have a 2000 2021 um, prism lamello ball rookie card and I'm looking to trade it with somebody and somebody says, hey, I've got a, let's just say a Prism John Morant card that I'm looking to trade with. I, I obviously know that the levels will be different, but you're, you're going to get the gist of what I'm saying. I will trade you these two cards for one or one for one. Okay, great. Because you've already been um, vetted through the process of joining that group, the trust factor is there knowing that I'm telling you I'm going to ship my ball prism card to your address and i trust that you're going to ship your john morant whatever it is from your address to my address and and we wash our hands of it and then when we both receive our cards it's like hey thanks man great card you know i hope it adds to your collection that type of thing because that's what we really need to get back into i know unfortunately on ebay uh, we get the scammers and i'm not saying i got scammed today but i have one that um, received a card and told me it was damaged and they want to send it back for a refund and they should have paid more attention and you know they wouldn't have bought it if they noticed and it was it was delivered not as advertised 
So I package up all my orders. I looked at it. I keep it in the, my graded cards in a plastic bag, stored away in a box. And when I ship it out, it's double bubble envelope and in a cardboard sleeve. So somehow or another, I looked at my listing. There was no damage done to the slab. Um, I, I don't want to accuse the individual that they broke it. Now they're just trying to get a refund. Sometimes in the back of your head, you can't help but think that way. But I, I simply just said, send it back. Once I get it back, I'll give a full refund. But I also did explain that, listen, I packaged these up. It was not broken when I shipped it out. I even checked the listing again. There was no damage on it when it was listed. So it evidently must have gotten broken then during shipment, which is still hard to find to believe when it's double mailer and a cardboard a sleeve. But if anything's possible, and I don't want to sit there and accuse them and tell them that you must have damaged it when it came out of the package. So... Um, but if there's other stuff, people, they see the value go down, so they instantly want a refund um, for whatever reason. So what I'm trying to create maybe is a forum or a group page for those that are collectors that want to trade. Um, there's been groups out there for pay it forward for cell phone accessories. Excuse me. <clears throat> for cell phone accessories, they pay it forward. So like if I got a new phone and the stuff that I have for my old phone I have no use for, I pay it forward and I ship it to somebody that has that phone that needs a case or a charge or whatever it was. I'm just, I don't want to create a pay it forward. I'm not looking to send you a card and get nothing back in return. I'm looking to just say, hey, listen, um, I'm a collector of this. Is anybody looking to trade? Uh, what, are you, what are you interested in? Hey, yep, I got a bunch of this guy and you got this guy. Maybe we could work something out and trade and just have that confidence to know you're not getting uh, ripped off. So does that make sense, guys? I, I hope it does. You know, I'm looking forward to the NBA playoffs coming up, but it just seems like more and more injuries, you know, could keep coming. You know, I got Miles Turner from the Pacers now just got hurt. You know, we know Jamal Murray, um, but I still think there's opportunity. I was looking on my phone before I jumped on uh, for tonight's leaders. This is opportunity for some young stars to start shining through at the end. Um, obviously, the, the Pistons um, aren't going to be um, in the playoffs. Uh, more than likely for definitely here, but you got you know Sadiq Bay has got 18 points for the Pistons tonight. Isaiah Stewart's got 10 rebounds. Um, he's also got um, 33 fantasy points for Isaiah Stewart for Detroit for in fantasy. Uh, Sadiq Bay's got six three pointers uh, to go with his 18 points tonight. So um, Killian Hayes for Detroit's got eight assists. Um, you got Goga for the Pacers, got three blocks. Uh, Bradley Beal's got three steals. Steph Curry's got four turnovers. Josh Jackson for Detroit has got four free throws made. So, yeah, I mean, there's just, I know there's not a lot of games on yet, but there's just a lot going on. Potential for teams that do make the playoffs and they've got injuries, excuse me, on their team for somebody young to step up that we're waiting to see. But, hey, you know what? This is an exciting time for those of you that are basketball fans. I think the Eastern and the Western Conference playoffs from round one all the way to the end is going to be awesome to watch. And uh, you know what? Don't stress about the retail prices. Um, do I think they'll ever go back down? I don't. Um, problem is, is they keep selling out. They're out of stock. So there's people that are actually able to fund and purchase everything up that's being sold. And I can't see companies like Panini lowering the price when they can get that high price and sell it. Uh, to me, I'm the old school salesman. Um, you know, you can get $100 from one person or you can get a dollar from 100 different people. Um, I would rather spread the wealth and get a, a dollar from 100 people um, because at the end of the day, um, in a business, your word of mouth is your best advertising. That's just me, old school. So um, I, I would rather sell 100,000 blaster boxes to, uh, you know, hundred thousand different people then split it in half and sell a hundred thousand to fifty thousand people so that that's just me um uh, customer oriented background that's what i like to do that's what i used to do uh, i used to run five cell phone stores quite a few years ago so i, I understand customer service in the background um, now i'm in a different role of type of customer service without the sales so um as my full-time job but yeah, anyways, guys, I hope that makes sense. If you haven't given us a follow yet, give us a follow, subscribe. Um, I'm going to put a link down below because I don't want you to forget, you know, May 15th, we do have our drawing for the 2020-21 NBA Hoops Blaster Box still sealed in the box. One lucky winner is going to be randomly drawn on the 15th. 
um, and that's going to be shipped to them in the United States, of course. And uh, I'll put the link down below for that so you can follow the directions and get en enrolled for that. And, you know, we're trying to boost up our, our numbers for subscriptions. Um, I'd like to bring more content. Uh, I'm not in the, the big leagues. I mean, I can't even do a live video on YouTube because I don't have a thousand subscribers. So I would actually love to do some live videos where I could interact with you guys um, and just get your thoughts and run things off and just see what you think. Or you could ask me questions too as well. So, hey, give us a follow. Give us a subscribe. Hit the little notification button as well. That's free. It doesn't cost you anything, but it definitely helps us out here. And if you haven't followed us on Instagram, check us out, KB Sports Cards. And we will see you probably tomorrow for a Black Tuxedo Tuesday. It works out perfect when it comes on a Tuesday. Tuxedo Tuesday for an SGC reveal. Um, actually, part of that order, I'll give you a heads up now. Part of that order, half of that order that I sent in were actually slabs that I broke out of GMA cards that were all GMA 10 that I had sent off to SGC to see how they crossed over and what the grading was on those. <clears throat> so actually, except for one card, I think one's a Moses Malone card, but all the other ones were all 10s. So I'll be curious to see the results on those. Um, I broke them out of the slabs from GMA. I was very careful with doing that um, and then put them in the, uh, the card saver with the, the penny sleeve when I sent them on. So excited to see the results for those. I think there's Kobe's, there's Tatum's, LeBron's in there. I think there's a decent variety. There might be 22 or 23 cards for tomorrow's reveal. So guys, as always, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you tomorrow.